The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Jason Bryant from the Short Time Wrestling Podcast and founder of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and operated, and those opinions presented and expressed may not reflect others, the sponsors, patrons, or the parent network. Find more shows about the greatest sport in the world at the Matt Talk Podcast Network at matttalkonline.com. It's time for Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling. We'll talk all things hokey wrestling with Coach Tony Roby and staff. Now, let's join your host, Hall of Fame wrestling writer and broadcaster, Jason Bryant. Another episode of Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling. Jason Bryant joined by multiple-time world medalist and new New River Valley resident James Green. Had a quite an accomplished career at the University of Nebraska. And Lincoln has made the move a little bit, clo- well, a lot bit closer to Jersey now. And uh, James, how have you uh, been adapting to your new home um, out it's there good. in Southwest Virginia? We, it's talking about being close to home. We are I have uh, my my wife's mom and niece came into town this weekend and uh, staying with us for a little bit, spend time with us. And her sister was able to come up from Georgia. And we had a good weekend here, hang out, um, say hi to. the our daughter glory. So yeah, that just already taking advantage of just being closer to family. And, uh, it's been good. Everybody's been welcoming. Um, not really, obviously the full experience as far as with, uh, the COVID going on and, um, people coming back into town and trying to, um, I think they're going to have like some in class here as far as I, I know, but, um, yeah, it's, it's picking up around here and it's been good. Yeah, so the difficulties, not just of you know being an athlete and moving across, but just the general moving your family across the country in right. something that's in a global pandemic. I mean, what were some of the difficulties that you guys had to go through in order to make this happen? Well, um, it at first we were worried, but I think uh, it was easier because we we just I, we did everything kind of ourselves as far as uh, we packed up our, a U-Haul and. Um, You know, I made the drive, it was like 17 hours, um, and unpacked here, but really, I guess, as far as trying to kind of get the house ready, um, things been on, you know, just back order. So, you know, you can't, as a luxury of going in and, Hey, can I get that? And that's, you know, at your house next week, it's like, Oh no, everything's (laughs) not for a couple months or so, um, on that note that that's been kind of, I guess, difficult shopping around, looking for things, um. Other than that, uh, for my daughter, she's trying to, we're adjusting. She was in daycare back in Nebraska. Now she's been at home um, with us and she's still adjusting to the house. But uh, yeah, we have family here. So she's having fun. She's walking around and um, yeah, it's been obviously different, but but we were here. We made it. So happy. Yeah, and it's not like you know your family could just hop in a car and be in Nebraska in a couple hours because right. um, you know I mean I, mean, I think it's six and a half seven for me, and I'm in the Twin Cities, and people I mean I've made that drive from Virginia Beach out here, that sucks, and I'm, <laughs> I I moved with my kid my, when my oldest we we moved from Colorado Springs back here, and the drive with the U-Haul I mean doing it by yourself is one I mean just just the family dynamic now a, a right. child just changes everything it's not just yeah. all right babe let's go. That's right, 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 man. It's it's definitely um. I and again, I have my even one of my sisters. She's coming down later in the week. So um, yeah, taking advantage of being close to everybody. I think it's only like five hours for her. So um, that's been great, and that's what we wanted. A um, big part of moving this way, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 excited. We're excited, but just got to get through this COVID. <laughs> You're not officially associated with the Virginia Tech wrestling program, but you are part of the Southeast Regional Training Center in terms of that nature. And, and right. what was the the enticement there? I mean, there there was talk that you know you know Jordan is going to make that move to the the Pennsylvania RTC, you know, once this cycles through, and then uh, you know you're, you're looking at where your career is going to go from here. And what made Blacksburg attractive for you? Um, so I mean, as part of you know outside of wrestling and my family, um, it 
it being so kind of centralized to where we are. Um, and on top of that, it's, it's a great place for me to train. You know, they, they've been in the top 10. Um, they've got a lot of guys in the room um, who have obviously want to be NCAA champions and then <clears throat> continue to the freestyle or international scene. Um, and as far as my career goes, um, not only being here and having bodies to train here, but I'm also within driving distance of other RTCs. Um, got NC State, UNC, uh, can go up to Philly. You know, so there's just a number of RTCs um, along the East Coast and can make for three, four-day training cycle and, you know, get back to the family. Um, also, you know, uh, when I'm done wrestling, um, hopefully an opportunity to get into the coaching scene, whether it's with the college or with the, you know, starting my own club, I'm still kind of on the fence um, and where I, what I want to do um, in far as that regards. But yeah, I just think that that opportunity presents itself um, for me here. Um, especially if I wanted to do that, um, while I was competing, um, and you see guys like David Taylor, Logan Seaver, a lot of these guys who have success on the international scene, opening clubs. I think we need more of that. So, um, yeah, Virginia is a great place. They got a great community of kids, a number of wrestlers and people that want to get involved with wrestling. So I'd, I'd be happy to do that for sure. Yeah, too many high school classifications, but we won't get there. I mean, you're from <laughs> Jersey. You got one, right. one to win a state title. So we, yeah. you know, I don't want to beat up my home state too much because <laughs> I will do that. But um, now, you know, career goals. I mean, you, there was, you know, when when anytime there's a UFC fight or something, you, wrestlers are chirping about, oh, what's going on, what's going on there, and you you've kind of chirped a little bit about that. So, yeah. uh, you know, thoughts on on getting in the cage? Man, I I I just feel like from sitting at home and wanting to compete and not being able to do it's like man i <laughs> let me try this thing out and and see you know how it goes i i feel like um as far as you know you you watch a guy like dc who's done done both wrestled um had a great wrestling career internationally and um was able to make the shift and then you have henry cejudo you just have all these wrestlers right who are who are making the transition and, and they're doing it and they're having success. Um, so it's almost like, why not? Why not, uh, you know, me or why not you? So um, it definitely and, won't be me. I can <laughs> say that. No way. <laughs> In that kind of sense, as far as, um, yeah, man, it, it'd be great to uh, give it a shot. And I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy, like, you know, if I'm like, Oh, I want to try it. I like, I legit want to try. There's a lot of things that I want to try. And if I have the opportunity then. Um, and it presents itself, I'll, I'll definitely try it. But at the same time, I want to give it my all. I don't want to just kind of be, you know, st half step and half training and then like, ah, I don't know. I I'll do it because, um, yeah, obviously I'm getting older. So if I'm if I'm going to do something, I want to try and do it to my best ability. So, um, yeah, it's, it's in the back of my mind. And I've, I've talked to people and I'm, I'm I've been trying to, you know, talk to people as their training, trying to get in, you know, be at their camps and just see the, see the kind of lifestyle it is. You know, you see a guy like um, Ryan Deegan, he, I see that he's been training with like, uh, or helping um, Justin Gaethje. Um, so stuff like that, just kind of get in the gym and be around and see, see that lifestyle, see the other side. And, um, and then we'll go from there. We'll see what it's like. We get to the wrestling component, of course, Hokey Nation, the prospects of you training here, uh, they're excited for you, but they're also excited about the, you know, what you can pass along to a pretty good kid who won a junior world title. Who's also from New Jersey, Makai Lewis. I mean, right. uh, have you had an opportunity to roll around with Makai and, and what do you think his prospects are? You know, not just on the NCAA wrestling side of things where he's already won a national title, but uh, internationally at the senior level. Um, yeah, I've gotten roll around with a couple guys on the team and yeah, uh, Makai, he's, he's a young kid and he's wants to be the best. Um, just like a lot of other guys in the room. And it's, it's nice to kind of be in that position where people are, you know, reaching out and wanting to get a workout in or wanting to get on a mat. Um, and not only are they learning from me, but I'm learning from them um, how to better myself. So it's been good so far. We've been, um, been able to get on a mat. And I think, you know, there's some guys here that are going to be trying to go to that uh, U S open. Um, so 
now that we have something to train for, it'll be, you know, kind of pick up, I guess, and um, try and get these guys ready. And, um, yeah, again, I I think it's nice to be able to have different bodies, not only Makai and with Hunter Bolin. um, And um, they just, you know, they're really interested in learning. So, and getting better and being the best they can, especially in this time where not much is certain and not much is going on. So everyone's just so, you know, soaking it up like a sponge. So it's been good. When it comes to your career, I mean, you spent so much time in Lincoln coming out there from high school. And then, you know, obviously, you know, a lot, a lot of comparisons to both you and Jordan, both being New Jersey guys, both being guys out there that have won world medals and been in Lincoln for so long and now making decisions that will, that will affect the next phase of your life. When it comes to James Green, your your Twitter handle has been "Who is James G?" for so long. Or do people still ask you that question? And how is the answer different over the years now? Um, so I, I guess it depends on what the kind of what moment is. Now it's more of a joke when someone's like, "Who is James Green today?" And it's like, if I'm in the moment, you know, where I'm talking to you, I'm like, "Oh, I'm just a wrestling doing an interview or just something like that." But um, some sometimes, uh, yeah, people are definitely still acting like. Um, you know, uh, or not even asking who I am, but still for some reason I get called Jordan or, or if I say, yeah, I'm, uh, I wrestled at Nebraska and they're like, Oh, uh, you're that Jordan bros. So that's, I think that's the, the I've problem. got a couple I, medals here. Respect, <laughs> the respect on my name. <laughs> that's the problem. Or I had associated with it. So if I ever talked to anyone that really wasn't familiar with wrestling, um, and I mentioned wrestling and I mentioned Nebraska, it's like, Oh, um, yeah, that guy, Jordan Burroughs. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm the other guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, yeah, it just depends on the day or who I'm talking to. I like to just kind of mix it up, too. And they're like, what do you do? Are you are you in, are you in the MMA? Or and I'm like, oh, I, I dabble. I got some fight. Like, I just like messing with people. But, um, yeah, it's it's – I don't know if I ever change it. We'll see. We'll see. When we talk about the – process of going through the olympic cycle and now covid impacting tokyo is it safe to assume that if the trials come and go and you don't make the team in 2020 you'd have been off to the next thing your your international career would have been done uh no no, no? i got yeah i i'm still having fun i still love the sport um i still got the urge to you know want to go out there and compete so i i I always told myself that's that's like why I've been with this whole I don't know MMA thing. It's like, well, I want to. I love wrestling. I want to do this as long as I can. I mean, if I'm healthy and my body's able to compete, I I see myself to, you know, just going out there and mm-hmm. doing my thing as long as I'm having fun. And the, what's so nice about wrestling is that, um, you know, I've been doing it for 20 years, but I'm still learning, um, and I'm still growing and trying to be a better version of myself every day. So. Um, if I can continue to do that and continue to have fun, I love traveling. I love, um, uh, going to different countries, being around different cultures, um, eating different foods. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been good. I, I still, I, it's not one time where I'm like, oh man, I don't want to wrestle it. Like, I, I have <laughs> not had that feeling. I'm, I'm itching to get back to compete. I'm always still watching, you know, diff- I've seen so many matches, over and over i'm still going back and watching them um just because i like the sport so much so yeah definitely a lot more fight in me regardless if it's 20 21 22 whatever if it gets pushed back if there's no i'm i'm gonna be here well one thing that has pretty much become apparent is you're moving up you're not going to make the move down to 65 and right. you experienced that firsthand in 2016 how difficult was that one to make the weight but once you made the weight to perform because we saw it that that wasn't yeah. the James Green we were used to seeing. Yeah, um, obviously results speak for itself. Um, me performing, I well, I went zero and two, so <laughs> it was uh, it was tough, especially because I was actually in school. Um, so it was my last. I ran through my eligibility years, but I had one more year of school, so I was in school, and um, I'm not. You know, I'm not a guy. This is a big cut, so I had to actually shrink my body. Um, and this took a – so I think I started cutting weight or trying to get smaller um, in September. And so September of 2015 or after, 
Yeah, after the World Championships, I try to get smaller. Um, and then we're going back to school. And then I think it was the Yarsu Dogu was the first tournament. Um, and that was 147. And I was just always happy to make it. Like, ah, I made it. But even then, it's like, I know. I'm like, ah, I got, now I got to compete. And now I got to feel good. And um, big, big self-talk guy. So I'm, you know, I'm trying my best to tell me myself that I'm ready. I feel good. Um, but I could always tell, like, there's something about the energy when that whistle blows and you get moving. I'm like, ah, I don't know. I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling up to it. And that's where my energy was. Sometimes it would be up there and sometimes it wouldn't. And it was a difficult process. There was times where I'm having practices and I'm like, all right, I think I really need to just dial back today or I'm not finishing practices like I would like to because I was yeah, tired. Even even some points where I'm wrestling people I used to beat up in the room and then I'm having a hard time like, man, what the just because I wasn't, you know, wasn't uh strong enough or didn't have that uh same uh energy I, I had previously before I started maintaining weight and um yeah, it was an everyday lifestyle. It was not just uh oh I'm wrestling next week, let me start cutting. It was every day waking up, get on a bike, get on a treadmill go work out and then before I go to bed I need to get on a bike get on a treadmill just so I can maintain trying to stay I always wanted to stay kind of like where I was at 150 so like at the end of the day I could be uh two or three pounds over um yeah because there was times I remember making weight for the Olympic trials um I was in a sauna with not sweating like so it was just rough but um yeah, never again. I I always say like, man, how did I make that? How did I do it? Um, but I did it. <laughs> I didn't perform, but I did it. Uh, so seventy four kilo, a lot much uh, easier for me to maintain. Obviously, I get to eat a little bit, um, bulk up, and um, yeah, wrestle more free. Not this is one less thing to work worry about. So I'm be happy, man. I'm a happy camper. Is that something you've you've passed along, and now you got you know you got the the younger Huskers that came through, and then you know when you talk to kids maybe back home at a clinic or something, it's like you know cutting weight. I mean, it seems like we've gotten away from cut as down as low as you can get. That mentality doesn't seem to prevail anymore. Even right. though, and then internationally we've got six weight classes to deal with Olympic on the Olympic level, and it's like well, everything we taught we we teach you about cutting weight now is kind of thrown out the window sometimes when it comes to choosing an Olympic weight. Yeah, man, it's it really does suck because uh, seventy kilos is literally perfect. I can just watch what I eat, and for that weight, I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself cutting weight. I'm just watching what I eat, get get the right meals in, drink some water, um, good work workout, and then I'm on weight. Like for you know, I had my daughter um, final X last year, and. I was able in that position, even though I missed my workout, I'm able to come in um, and still lose eight, eight pounds or whatever and make weight is just because it's not, I'm not cutting weight. It's water, you know, water weight. It's me being on full feed. Um, so, and I feel better as a wrestler. And I think, yeah, we, there's always going to be the person that does cut the weight to extreme. Um, but with that day of wrestling, I think that'll help. And I think you feel better when you're wrestling, you know, closer to your weight, your actual weight. So, yeah, kids, don't 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 cut weight. <laughs> Just go out and wrestle. When we talk about your daughter a little bit, you know, that was one of the one of the big big uh, subjects of Final X and Lincoln is. Yeah. You know, you joke that, okay, yeah, you know, I just, yeah, baby's coming, you know, <laughs> it's like just had the baby's like, it was like, was that your last quiet night of sleep? Because that's what we all told you in the press conference. Like you had the, you had the only time you had the room to yourself from there on right, out. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I want to say it's my, it was my last quiet night of sleep. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was definitely a game changer. And it was actually my, it was my first and last time like being in my house by myself, <laughs> Because um, typically I'm the one on the road and my wife, she's at home. Um, and if I'm home, we're all home. But that night was kind of weird. It's like, wow, this is what it's like being by myself. And then now, you know, with COVID and we're always together. Um, but at that same time, like for those first couple of months, because that's right, you know, make a world team. Then we have training camp. Um, my house wasn't empty, like for the first, because we had family coming to check in on the baby. 
So, um, yeah, when I went to camp, that was like another quiet night. But then I'm coming back. It's like, oh, so I'm, this is what I'm missing out. The baby crying, changing diapers. Um, so it was a crazy time, wild time. And every week I was coming back, you know, the baby was growing. Glory is doing something else, doing something new. So once we settled down and I got to spend some more time, it was fun. But definitely craziest, what, uh, 36, 48 hours I've had. It was it was extreme and I've never been so tired after that drilling after my second final X match I remember just taking my drug test and like my hands were just shaking and it was like I was so exhausted but got it done got the job done so always like you said everyone knows about glory and I'm sure she'll hear that story anytime (laughs) yeah I mean before we started Uh, everybody knows the day she was born everybody I mean while you know Jordan's kids got Instagram accounts. Everybody at least knows. Uh, everybody at least knows your child's birthday, so uh, yeah. you got one up there. Right. When, when it comes to the, the sport of wrestling, you talked about travel, and and this is one thing in traveling overseas since consistently since two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. People equate certain places with certain feelings, and as an athlete, you know you got places that you hate to wrestle. You got places that you hate to train. You places that you love to train and you love to wrestle. What have what have been some of your favorite places over the years to maybe not necessarily compete in, but you know take the competition side of out that you've been able to enjoy that that the sport of wrestling gave you that you wouldn't have had the opportunity to do. Um, as a a competitor and being in you know uh, wrestling, obviously not predominant sport here in America, but it's it's always great to go to Russia and compete um whether it's you're on in the competition area or you go out and you're doing some uh exploring they know wrestling they know the so it's almost a different feeling um you know when you're having people that know who you are or when's the last time you wrestled or who you know they don't care if you're the best guy, the worst guy, they just want to see good wrestling anytime you go out there and, um, you know, they'll cheer, cheer you on, even if it's against Russia. Um, so, like, the past two years, I went to the Alans tournament in Vladikavkaz, and it's been great. They're a great host country. They um, take you around. They're a country, you know, they have so many good wrestlers come from that area. So, to go compete um, in front of the, and from the morning to the, after, you know, to the, tournament ends the stadium is packed so it's always exciting to go to russia and um i went to iran one time and i think every wrestler should get the opportunity to go there and compete because they packed the stadium as well and um it was death for the world cup team what was that 20 what year was that 2017 it might have been 2017 we went to kermanshaw um and that was great Uh, i think we took third Third or second, one of those. I don't know, but great atmosphere. They took care of us. We're landing in the airport. People are waiting at the airport for us. It was it was exciting. Um, but yeah, um, I think that and Italy was fun too. Just to get out. I've never been to Italy. Um, on the tourist side of things, going mm-hmm. out and being able to travel and see the see the city. So, um, I mean, I, I like I said, I love wrestling. So I, I've there's some places that are better than others, but I love going out and exploring different cultures. So, you know, I've been pretty much to every world championships since 2007. And some of these countries and some of these places surprise you. Um, right. Like, one, I had a buddy live in Kazakhstan prior to this oh, you nice. know, happening and, and performance notwithstanding. I think Nur Sultan surprised a lot of people in terms yeah. of like, this is, this is not what we expected. What were your impressions of Kazakhstan? Man, I th- I honestly thought I'm like this it reminded me of um just how like at the night I don't know if you went out at night, but it was like going down because they had Did so I go out at lights. night? Come on. <laughs> Remember who you're talking to here. I, I'm not even like but just I was in bed by nine o'clock every night. <laughs> Scouts on they had the lights. I'm like, man, it's it, almost like Vegas. They have everything kind of on that main strip and then you go out and you can kind of see some other things behind. But it was that like you said, the the hotel that like uh, that my wife and uh, Lauren, they stayed in the same. I think pay, basically anyone that came over the hotel that those guys stayed in, that was great. I was like, wow, taken away. Um, and yeah, the people were nice. The stadium was packed. Uh, there was, I don't know if you heard about that little crowd of people trying to get 
to Jordan when we were uh, leaving the arena, but um, other I heard about it. <laughs> I mean, I was in the I was on the uh, the front end of the arena. I understand that was like uh, he was sick, and then like the bodyguard. I mean, I heard it was it was chaos back then. Yeah, they from like the the exit of the door exit to basically had to take a taxi because they there was just a crowd of people and everyone's trying to touch Jordan and just shove him in the car and like get him to the hotel. But other than that, it was great. It was great. I like Kazakhstan. Yeah. What was interesting was is, you team. know, like I said, my buddy's been over there for five years, you know, wiring it. There's no, there's no, no power lines, which is, which is interesting. And then uh-huh. you, you look out like behind the arenas. And if you looked, I guess it would be North through the step. It just stops. I mean, there's this, it's building, 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 building arena grass that just <laughs> nothing. It was wow. just the city popped up. I mean, the city's only like 25 yeah. years old, but it's like, it's crazy how it just it just stops. You know, you look mm-hmm. at it at night and it's just black. It's just like okay, there is really nothing that way. Yeah. I mean, it's just strange. Yeah, it was definitely crazy. And um, I mean, something. I guess I, if they had something there, I'd be. I wouldn't be too too mad about. It, I guess for wrestling. Um, did did you you know you talk about the the food and and whatnot? What did did you have the horse? No, I did not. No? I did not. Um, maybe because. It's a horse. I didn't want it. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't competing and I did it, and if I, I don't know, obviously I've never had it before. I just didn't want that time to be, oh, damn, my stomach. My stomach so, yeah. So a uh, part of that, like, you know, uh, there's um, Rob Skinner, you know, the guy with, with Team USA. Hey, he's, he's on the road everywhere as a, as a nutritionist and whatnot with Team USA. And, you know, how much do, do people like that really help? Or, and how much are you guys warned, don't eat anything you've never eaten before or something like that? What's that process like for an athlete overseas? Um, it's great. Rob is great. Um, you know, they have a whole little system. You know, we get in and uh, even before we get there, um, he's he's traveling with, I don't know, three, four suitcases. He's like, what do, what do you need? out? you know, bringing it. He, he's always got the overweight bags just because it's full of, things that pork roll uh, it didn't yeah. it's, it's bringing all that pork roll <laughs> for you to. so um he goes out he shops um you know he's buying he sets up a station in his room like if you don't like what's downstairs i can whoop up something um here in the room he's got a little iron skillet uh and then uh what's it called the hot the hot plate kind of thing so which is a hey, traveler's tip that is something that if you're kind of questionable about food and get one of those hot plates bring it with you you can feed yourself in the little room and set yourself up but um yeah rob does great job um and then if there is a question i, I go out we go out somewhere and we're like hey what do you think about this we just send it to him on the whatsapp and he'll tell you um you know his thoughts he's a he's a good he's a big foodie so uh yeah he does great with us um for me though i i'm i'm not too picky i i don't really ask much because i just eat anything but uh yeah he's he's great man i i like rob a lot is there one thing you've absolutely refused to eat that was put in front of you overseas besides um, maybe I, the horse yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah that wasn't really put in front of us but uh i, I um, admit i had the horse <laughs> twice <laughs> on purpose or you didn't know no, well, on didn't purpose. Know. I didn't have the fermented horse milk though. That's uh, where I drew the line. I like no, no, no. I'm in the market. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, nope. Um, I don't. I can't think of anything. Um, yeah, just like as there's not the horse. The horse is probably the only thing that I haven't eaten. I, I like chicken, pork, lamb, beef. Just and make sure it's food. super cooked. I think we yeah, all made yeah, that mistake yeah. in, in right. Uzbekistan a couple years ago. Which yeah. food prep. In the two different countries, not they're not the same. Uzbekistan mm-hmm. and Kazakhstan, not the same. No matter, right. even though they're stands, big difference. Mm-hmm. I guess, yeah. I, I I think I stay away from the soup sometimes because I don't know what's what's in it. They have, they're heavy on the soup, so I don't really do do that if I can't really tell what what was put into it. So yeah, I don't eat much dairy to begin with, but that's mm-hmm. definitely something that is that is that's that's off limits. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, what's it washed in? Okay, can you drink the water? <laughs> It's like we were asking one of them. It's like, hey, can you drink the water here? And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, you know, brush. Oh, yeah, brush your teeth fine. It's like, can you drink? It's like, oh, no. <laughs> they're like, quit. Yeah, yeah, you can brush. You know, I've, I've got the point where I'm so paranoid about that. Like, mm-hmm. I remember in Brazil, I brought, I was, I was like showering with Listerine with- in my mouth. So <laughs> I wasn't drinking any of the water. I mean, it's probably a little over the top, but 
Now, getting back to Blacksburg, Virginia Tech, and the community here around Hokie Nation, uh, you've, you've come in from a, a, a Power Five institution at Nebraska, so the, the large state institution is not something new to you. But uh, what are some of the unique things you've discovered about Blacksburg and Virginia Tech, uh, you know, specifically that, that you didn't know about before you got here? This is me moving here besides coming to visit. I had never been to uh, Blacksburg. I'd never been to Virginia Tech. Um, I think I wrestled, I actually wrestled, uh, what you call it, for third, fourth Virginia Tech one time. Uh, but, yeah, so I didn't know anything about Blacksburg um, or Christiansburg. Um, so it's nice. It was just kind of nice to get to see the layout. You know, it's kind of got the, the nature side, the hiking, um, and then – there is a big interest. There is a big following of wrestling here. So um, at least on social media, the presence or me getting messages from people about, you know, trying to come out and set up clinics or camps, um, uh, come and uh, to a t- different high schools or uh, not even only Virginia, but West Virginia as well. Um, so I think the interest of the sport is here. Um, and I, I like that. It was very welcoming. Everyone, that I've seen, if I tell them, um, you know, I, I moved here and I'm working with the, the the wrestling team here, and they're like, "Oh, that's great. We're we're glad to have you. The wrestling program's great." So we got Nebraska field too, as far as you know, uh, the college team or Virginia Tech is, you know, that's the almost a professional team. So from that standpoint, it's been great. Um, and unfortunately, with COVID, I haven't. They have people moving in and uh, coming back into town, so. I I haven't really got to see what that's like, what that would be like. Um, I think, you know, they're working towards having a football game still. So it'll be interesting to see how that, if it makes it or if it happens, um, how that plays out. Um, it's what downtown will look like because I know what Nebraska looks like on a game day. So <laughs> it'll be interesting. Two other things I want to touch on before we go, and they both – involved the, the Southeast RTC one Jenna Burkett's also coming to train in women's freestyle. She's in the army's world-class athlete program. Uh, how many times have you crossed paths with Jenna and what do you know about her? And what do you think she's going to bring to the, the Southeast RTC? I know Jenna just from going out, you know, to the OTC. Um, I think we are on the, well, we've been on a couple, one, two world teams or world championships together. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to have her, come out once in a while and be in the room, throwing ideas, picking each other's brains um, and getting to know more about her. But she's a great person. I know, I know she does like the pull up challenge and stuff like that better than I could do for sure. But yeah, it's, it's great to be able to, you know, head an adventure and have women be a part of the freestyle scene here and hopefully getting, you know, when she does come out and have her training, um, we have more women come out and um, even some Greco guys have re- reached out. I don't know if you, if you seen me and Raymond Bunker going back and forth on social media, but she, he's down in uh, North Carolina. And I, you know, I think we're going to get some Greco guys and, you know, just, just have some, those different kind of training sessions would be great. Not only for the SERTC, but for each individual um, athlete as well, because we're all going to be learning, all getting better. So um, it's exciting times, and hopefully um, we have more coming down the line. Now, lastly, one of the guys out there on staff in Blacksburg, a guy named Jared Frayer, made the Olympic team in 2012. Grizzled veteran. He's got a bag of tricks, and he's also got a, a very unique style of wrestling. At your mm-hmm. let's 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 just call it advanced wrestling age. You know, we're, we're uh-huh. kidding half half kidding here. What can you learn from a guy like Jared Frayer at this point in your career? Well, I I can learn a lot of things. Like you said, he I'm not much of a I guess uh, you know as far as throwing or he like you said he had, he does have some tricks. Um, he obviously have a great front head offense. So I think that's one aspect that I really look forward to learning is not only offense, but defense as well. Cause if, if you, if you're going to learn how to do it, you got to learn how to defend it too. So, <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he, I'm looking forward to getting in and learn, learning from him. Um, and I think the other, when I came, I've only worked out or rolled around with him, uh, one time, but, uh, parterre too uh that would be good so i'm a 
I'm becoming more open to listening because I, I, I was stubborn. If I don't know if you ask Snyder, <laughs> I'm a stubborn. <laughs> I was a stubborn guy. So, but now I'm uh, definitely opening up and uh, to others' opinions and trying to get better. So it'll it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see, you know, the 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 chest lock, front headlock roll throughs and stuff. Right, like that. right. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like, hey, guess what? When you, <laughs> I'm just, uh, we like to joke Jared about his age. He's barely older than me, but we're both <laughs> Bucks fans, so we're we're good there. But uh, James, in the time we got left here on this particular episode of Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling, anything you want to say to Hokie Nation uh, in, in the in the couple weeks you've been there, and what what can they expect from you on on the mats for as long as you're here? Well, I just want to. Uh, say thank you for welcoming thank welcoming me thank you for having me to the Hokie Nation um I'm excited to be here so is my family we're gonna do our best to help provide and get this wrestling team uh as prepared as possible for hopefully the season they have coming up and then we're gonna try and have someone on that Olympic team uh by the time April comes so Thank you again, and I'm, I look forward to being here in Blacksburg, Christiansburg. Hokie fans, listen to Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling anywhere you go by subscribing on Apple Podcasts. Go to InsideVirginiaTechWrestling.com slash iTunes, or you can get the exclusive Android or iOS apps by going to InsideVirginiaTechWrestling.com. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.